silence is deafening. Oh, yes. How do you go about finding uh, your subjects the people you spoke to? I'm sorry? How did you go about finding your subjects the people you were interviewing that were attached, you know, that had these particular powerful I, memories? I made a list of the people that if I didn't make this movie and I was seeing someone else's Gain Wilson movie that I would like to have in the in the film, and then I wrote them letters. I basically went on a fishing expedition, and to my delight, um, they all responded. And, and uh, Stephen Colbert actually, uh, uh, the day after I mailed it, his assistant called and said, when do you want to interview Stephen? And uh, it was uh, amazing, the response from all these people. Did that answer it? <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Yes? How long did it take you to, from, from the time you thought about doing it until the, the end of the production? Uh, the question was, how long did it take from the time I thought about doing this to this? Um, about six years. I, I thought it would take um, three months. <laughs> and, uh, wow. Uh, I, I have so much admiration for documentaries and documentary filmmakers. Uh, a friend of mine, Les Blank, who made a lot of great documentaries, um, takes so told me it takes a minimum of ten years, and sometimes he doesn't even know what the subject is. It takes about eight years for him to figure that out. So I guess I'm lucky at five. Anyone else? Probably more. Crazy question. Weird question. No? Yes. Is this the fully edited version? Yes, it is. But um, we shot 175 hours of uh, footage and edited down to 86 minutes. So when we have the DVD, um, we always intended that we would have um, some seriously real cool um, DVD extras from everybody. I mean, uh, when I when we filmed Stephen Colbert, I thought he would give me about 15 minutes, and he was amazing. He gave us an hour and a half, so I have quite a lot of really cool stuff from him, um, from Bill Maher, from uh, Neil Gaiman, uh, Guillermo. God, I mean, he also. I think. What did he? How much time did he give us? In the it seemed like a couple of hours. So, a couple of hours. Um, so, I forgot the question, but maybe that answered it. Okay. <laughs> yes? What were some of the interviews that you enjoyed the most? I'm sorry? What were some of the interviews that you enjoyed the most doing? Oh, um, I really, well, I enjoyed them all. I really enjoyed Guillermo and uh, Colbert and Neil Gaiman. Um, Stan Lee was a lot of fun, especially when he came up with that thing about that um, men menu, Mama, Mama Liga, uh, and the fact that he said he had it on his wall, and I, I called him on it, because a lot of people say, yeah, I've got this thing, and then the next day I get a fax from him with the menu, and I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, well, Gaim. Gaim. Gaim was a lot of fun, and, and I would I would go to Sag Harbor where he lives, and um, I guess once a month for about a week, and um, we would just, I, I at some point decided I would structure the story according to the themes of his cartoons, and they also directly related to themes in his life, and the one, one thing um, I, um, kept putting off and putting off because I knew it was going to be a sensitive subject for him was his alcoholism. And that was literally the last interview I did. And um, somehow it worked out um, surprisingly well because he, he was, he didn't, we never talked about it, and, but he kept wondering when I was going to bring it up. And after that interview that day, he was absolutely in tears and so relieved. And his wife was quite surprised that he even discussed it because he never told anybody, none of his friends, just her. So um, that, that Gayen, of course, you know, 
He's my hero. He was my hero when I was a kid, and after doing this, I mean, when you make a documentary about someone, uh, it, you're never prepared for what is going to be revealed. And I thought I knew him, but I didn't know him really until I delved into his life, the good, bad, and the, you know, weird. <laughs> yes? Has he seen this, and how did he respond? Oh, he loved it. He, he absolutely loved it. The people at the New Yorker loved it, Hefner loved it, and they're just waiting for it to come out, and they're so generous. Neil Gaiman just sent me a congratulations uh, on my Blackberry, which was nice. <laughs> yes? What's your favorite war story from the production? Uh, favorite war story? Well, Robert almost got hit by a truck, uh, hit and run, destroyed one of our cameras, uh, that was a good one, and the guy took off, we ran after him and caught him. Uh, that was uh, something. Anyone else? Why did it take so long? Why did it take so long? Um, well, you don't have a script, or I didn't have a script, and I didn't transcribe this, so it was all in my head. And I spent, I don't know, five months editing it, and showed it to a very famous editor friend of mine, Walter Murch, and realized I'd gone completely in a, in a wrong direction and scrapped everything, started all over. And, you know, it's, it's just, without a script, it takes time to figure it all out. I had always, can you, I, all right. That's right. I had always thought that we had to impose a story on the film, uh, but Gan's life informed us ultimately, um, and and his inner life uh, defined what the story would be would become. And and I think that that process of, of coming to understand it just it just takes a long time, and that was part of why it took so long. One more question. Yes. Did you what surprised you? What did you learn that was totally upset? Well, when Stephen Colbert told that very personal story about his father and brother being killed in a plane crash, um, and that that brother was the one who introduced him to Gay and Wilson, I, you know, I'm operating the camera, I'm looking through the lens, and he's saying this stuff, and part of me is thinking, gee, maybe I should stop the camera and ask him if he really wants to say this, and then the shameless filmmakers thinking, oh my god, I can't believe what Stephen Colbert is saying. That, that was, I don't think anything surpassed that. To me, um, the thing that I found was the most surprising was the, the understanding of how Gahan's obsession with, with, with horror and monsters is so um, directly and inversely related to kindness and love. And um, I think that, you know, having the understanding of that, which just eventually came after being with, with Gan and the film for so long was, was pretty surprising. One last, one last thing I will say. Um, it's taken me a long time to get the interest of, of uh, distributors and being here at Comic-Con sort of woke them up. Uh, early than never. Um, but uh, at one point I was so depressed about this rejection. I mean, I felt like one of the cartoonists being rejected. And uh, I just, um, I thought, well, God, if Gan turned out to be a real baby killer or something, and I showed him eating babies, I probably would have sold in two seconds. But. Um, as you can see, he's quite a wonderful human being. Anyway, thank you very much for coming. Please tell your friends. <laughs>